Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Tony. I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, about a story of a company called Medipost. It's a Korean company. It started in the year 2000. Um, founded CEO, Dr. Yoon Sun Yang, who's a clinician. Start off as a cold blood banking. We operate still the large, largest private cold blood banking uh, company in Korea. That's our cash cow. A public company, $450 million market cap in COSDAQ in Korea. And we've also been developing for the past 13 years um, using cold blood donated, not those ones that you store for, for private use, um, donated cold blood um, and then derived um, mesenchymal stem cell like cells as a therapeutics for allergenic cell therapy. And we have a spin out of the parent company uh, based out in the, in the, in the US. We have the regulatory jurisdictions and the market access to Americas and then EU and Australia and New Zealand. Basically what we do is we transpose what's been developed in Korea clinically and then uh, one product in the market, uh, bring it out to other jurisdictions such as US where we're doing the trials, EU and some other countries. So as a conceptual um, background, autologous as we've heard this morning can come from various sources. Allergenic simply is a source of cells that come from non uh, unrelated uh, donors, um, and in, in this case, we get it from a cold blood of unrelated uh, donor as, as a donate, donated material with informed consent forms from Korea, or we saw some in the U.S. as well for U.S. manufacturing. So the allergeny here is that the, you don't need a blood type or HLA class matching, so it's completely universal. So the manufacturing process um, goes that you get the donated cold blood material coming in, and then we do eligibility tests. So it's a, a mass production, um, pre-manufacture, off the shelf. So after stage we can do harvest and banking that we call that as a drug substance. And this approved product I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, is going through that process that by the FDA of Korea, was, we got approval three years ago, um, that the pre-manufacture stop, if you like, uh, can, can last up to three years validated. And then once we get the order for, um, for instance, one product we have in the market, which is for neosteoarthritis, as a prescription comes in for that particular formula, we do a five-day culture um, and then release an ambient temperature, 4 to 20 degrees Celsius, stable for 48 hours, shelf life. So these are some patent portfolio for the manufacturing and receive some government funding of Korea. So this has all been pr uh, product developed in Korea. One product I'm going to talk to you about um, in the market already uh, for osteoarthritis. So that's the product called Cardistem, and this is for degenerative osteoarthritis. I'll actually show you some uh, phase three clinical data. And then the same product is undergoing phase one to eight trial by US FDIND for about two years now. So this was a product approved by uh, South Korean FDA. January 2012 as the first allergenic stem cell product approved by any regulator. And the mechanism of action is quite simple, as we've heard earlier this morning, is through paracrine action. So into the knee joint, you can see the worn out cartilage on the bones there. And the endogenous chondrocyte, the patient's own chondrocyte, can make normal cartilage matrix are present there, but they're not stimulated. So that by putting the cell zine, which is the human umbilical cord blood derived from mesenchymal stem cell, so that we implant there, and then those cells will detect the signals around the environment and then release out the proteins through what's known as paracrine action. Now what that does is it controls inflammation as well as stimulating endogenous cell activity and then the endogenous cell matrix gets reproduced. Those cells that are implanted, implanted gets removed and digested after several weeks. The longest period of time in the animal models we follow is up to 10 to 12 weeks. So if you look at the um, cartilage defect, it basically goes into four categories. And ICRS is the International Cartilage Repair Society, International Group of Orthopedic Surgeons. They grade the, the defect on the, on the cartilage or surface of the bone into four. One being the least, which is superficial loss. Grade two is less than 50. Grade three is more than 50. Grade four is a complete loss and bone exposed. And that, that was, we've done phase one, two trial in Korea, and then phase three randomized control trial uh, in Korea using those grade four patients. What's out in the market, though, is there's procedure known as microfracture where you can drill holes through the bone or the bony area or the thin um, area of the cartilage and then cause bleeding from bone marrow. And then the patient's own bone marrow would actually contain cells that repair some level of cartilage, but it's limited by the size of cartilage as well as age of the patients. If the patients beyond, go beyond 50 or 55 of age, that procedure doesn't work. Uh, the, the other alternative is, as you know, knee uh, implants, uh, artificial uh, knee um, total or partial knee replacements. And they, they only have a lifespan of any, anywhere between 10 to 15 years. So a patient will be typically be asked to come back at a later stage of their lives to do that, i.e. after maybe 70 years of age. There's other uh, products such as autologous chondrocyte implantations. Uh, we have some companies presenting here, I believe. That, that is um, to get the piece of tissue from patient's own knee and then take it to the lab, differentiate them, and expand them in large numbers of, of chondrocytes, which are the 
uh, cartilage making cell types and then bring it back into the patient, the two stage procedure. Uh, but that also has a limitation by patient's age. By the same token, the microfracture using patient's own cells lose effectiveness as the patient's age goes beyond 50, 55 years of age. So this is a um, pivotal study we've done um, now some four years ago in Korea with 103 patient randomized control trial. Now the yellow bars indicate the actual patients enrolled for the study um, and you can see that we focused on the age groups of between approximately 50 to 70 because that's where the market gap is because you, if you're younger than 50, 55 years of age you can do microfracture which is pretty effective for, for what it is and then if you go beyond 70 then that's when people get uh, artificial knee implants. So we wanted to see by enrolling those majority patients in that age group and then by providing allogeneic cell to, to stimulate endogenous cell growth and, and also cartilage reproduction we can bridge that gap. And apparently, I mean obviously if you could do that then, then the age group can, can be covered um, all over. So this is actually one year time point um, after single treatment, and we looked at a number of patients improved, meaning improved from a grade four, three, or better. So all the patients at grade four, meaning a bare bone stage, after one year, this is patient number that actually um, have been verified morphologically with um, um, a great... Uh, grade three, two, or one, or better, a regeneration, basically. And if you s split that data into the age groups, you can see at the top row, um, there you've got 100%, almost 100% regeneration, irrespective of the age group, on the cardistem. And the bottom lower um, row, you can see the microfracture being effective and under 50 years of age, but the red numbers coming up are beyond the 50 years of age, which means that as the age goes over, the microfracture uh, seems not to work. Now, we are, we've done long-term follow-up of these patients, phase three patients. This is post-approval um, for two uh, main uh, aspects. One was the uh, long-term safety. So the 36-month follow-up of this th phase three patients were done with T2 mapping of MRI images to see any um, soft tissue um, um, growth. There was no safety issues. But more importantly, at three year time frame, which is finished last year, and we've just completed our four-year follow-up, the, the, the pain and the functional scores, so 100 millimeter VAS and IKDC and WOMAT, they're the measurements of pain and function. At three-year time point, what we see on the top graph there is a red line is a control group microfracture, middle point is one year, far right point is three-year time point. You can see that from the baseline, which is far left, the, the line goes down and back up again, which means after three years, microfracture pa patients will go same level of um, functional difficulties, whereas the blue line, which is cardiostem treated patients, that, that effect is sustained up to three years. And we're checking that four year now data is coming out. And again, it's the different measurement, uh, measurement scoring system, IKDC. It measures um, higher the score, the better. So far right, you can see that it continues to maintain the improved state on the blue line, which is cardiostem. And then the lower line is the control group. And that shows a long term safety safety and efficacy so for up to three to four years, and we're looking ahead to it. And the label for Korean uh, approval is for repetitive and or traumatic cartilage degeneration, including degenerative osteoarthritis with uh, large cartilage defects, and then that, that is approved without age limit with, um, with our phase three data, uh, including all the, all the ages of patients beyond 70, 75. So the BLA, which is Biologic License Application, basically market approval, um, as you know, for biologics in Korea, there was January, and the product was launched. Um, this was um, developed with uh, Samsung Medical Center and Donga Pharmaceuticals there in Korea. There's a Korean domestic pharmaceutical company who has a license for domestic rights. Since the launch in May 2012, we've um, treated, uh, as of last month, on market, um, over 1,300 patients. Um, with dosing of 1,500 dose releases, because some patients, with, depending on the size of defects, may require two doses of our product. So it is currently available um, for the last two and a half years of about 200 clinics across Korea, and uh, the post-market surveillance mandated by Korean FDA is 600 patients. So we, we're collecting that data. Uh, Australia and Canada has um, uh, indicated that, that they will be willing to review our uh, dossier package, including um, Korean clinical trials data for market approval, and, and we would like to um, submit that um, application uh, beginning of next year, and, and, and the work is in progress. So last couple of minutes, I just want to do um, the uh, uh, introduction on the other couple of products. Um, one is a um, product called Pneumostem. This is for prematurely born babies, and uh, extreme preterm babies born at 24 to 26 weeks gestation, staying in a neonatal ICU. It's an orphan indication, and the cells are dribbled down to the trachea, and then that controls inflammation, and then uh, really activates or promotes um, differentiation, of right, right, differentiation of right cell types to, to create what's 
the uh, surfactants, which are the natural uh, moistening um, solutions that get secreted to, to coat the lung. Now, that indication is in phase two after successful phase one trial in Korea. And we have often status from both KFDA, the Korean FDA, as well as US FDA on the particular product. We've just cleared IND for phase one slash two trial in the US, and we, uh, we look to begin that trial um, early part of next year. And, and with the orphan status in Korea, for, for instance, after phase two trial, which are almost complete, uh, then we'll be able to give an, uh, an opportunity to go mark, uh, early market access, being an orphan indication. The third product in the pipeline, which is been, uh, again being developed in Korea, for f it's on phase 2A trial now, again after successful phase 1 trial um, last year completed for Alzheimer's disease. And this, the, the cells are delivered directly to the brain uh, through a couple of various um, uh, routes of uh, administration that we have um, a clinical uh, conceptual uh, data on. The same product will look to do an IND proposal um, here in the U.S. Um, next year. So what we're doing now is the, it's a Korean company that's been funded um, both privately and, and at government level uh, within Korea. And the, the red dots indicate that where we're actually accessing the markets, with, um, particularly with our approved product, which is for the knee osteoarthritis. The business model or corporate structural model is that we've got the spin-out company in the Medipost America, which has established a private company, a Delaware company in the U.S. And we have the right to commercialize and, and, and um, exploit the markets of all the Americas and then EU countries, as well as Australia. So uh, we, we look to invite um, investors um, going into that vehicle, and, and we are preparing a private placement offering um, for this particular vehicle um, for accessing those markets uh, early part of next year. And I'll be um, happy to hear from any of the interest parties. Here's my email. Any technical questions or any corporate-related questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you. Sure. What we have is that their, their indication that they would be willing to review the clinical data package. And as I've presented, our pivotal study conducted in Korea includes those age group, and the label is hence labeled for that age group. Sure. Just a, a quick question about your commercial experience with the product in Korea. Yes. Um, what markets um, uh, are being, um, uh, what markets are you targeting and how are you finding the clinical response? What are the doctors saying, recommending to their patients for what treatment, you know, where is the sweet spot for that particular therapy? Okay, so as you, as I was trying to demonstrate, the, what we were, how we were designing this product profile was to really target that age group where there is no current intervention of care apart from painkillers, which is approximately the age between 55 to 75. Now, that's a typical age group of patients who have you know, suffered for the cartilage defect and, and a sort of uh, degenerative condition for a long time. So what doctors were doing, by the way, this, this clinical data that I presented, including long-term safety and efficacy, is being put together as a manuscript. It's being submitted, so it will be out in the public domain. But without that being available on the market right now, what the, the clinicians are doing is that they're, these are orthopedic surgeons. They've, they're conservative. They wouldn't want to see things with their own, their own eyes. So they try, in the beginning, it was very difficult to earn their um, support. So they would be um, a skeptical at some, some level, but trying them out and the patients really see the patients responding. Um, and after maybe a handful of patients, three, four patients, then they gain um, credibility and confidence. So we're, we're seeing a, a good sort of an exponential curve of um, those, uh, a group of surgeons, especially clinics, who, who test them out first and then see the response to themselves and then really go with it. And is the product reimbursed in Korea? It is not reimbursed. So Korea has a national health insurance system, so it's not, not reimbursed by the national grid, but the private payers, if, if individuals have a private cover, then it will pay because it's a registered product. And one last question. In Japan, there's a large hyaluronic acid um, yeah. uh, uh, market. injection market because um, joint replacement surgery is relatively low for that country. Um, how do, you, uh, do you have to compete with hyaluronic acid in your own market in Korea? That's a good question. I think hyaluronic acid has been in the market, as you know, for a long time. It is a viscous supplementation. 
as a device. So it does not change the course of or so-called disease modify. And what we present in the pivotal study in Korea is a morphological improvement or reversing cartilage defect causing regeneration. Secondly, now, um, as other regulators put more focus on, is a pain and functional outcome, especially long term. So I think with this product, uh, compared to HA products, that we managed to, we believe, create a morphological confirmation that it causes regeneration, and also on the functional front, it sustains, improves and sustains the, f the pain and function. And I, I don't think any of the HA product can do that. Okay, sorry, I skipped that part. It's surgically administered um, a minor arthrotomy, which is a small incision or arthroscopy, and then um, the defect is identified, and then the cells are released with a biopolymer, hyaluronic acid, uh, as a combination. So they get mixed at the OR into a gel, and then surgically they're planted onto the knee defect or the cartilage defect. How long does it So the, the regrowth, both in animal models and what we see in the patients, is about anywhere between 8 to 12 weeks. Uh, you'll see a, a, a regrowth of college. I, actually, I have a question myself. Sure. Um, for the Korean BLA, how many patients have been treated? On market? Before market, before the BLA. The pivotal BLA study? Issue. Yes. Yeah, the pivotal study phase 3, as I said, was 103 patient trial. Prior to that, we had um, 12 patient phase 1, 2 trial was a safety. And then phase 3 was 103 randomized control. Couldn't be blinded because the active control was microfracture, which was uh, chronic intervention care. But nothing else says there. Uh, HA is not going to be classified as a uh, you know, therapeutic intervention. Yes, so the, the question was, was a review of the imaging blinded. So on the morphological endpoint, which is to see whether there was any cartilage regrowth, the images were taken by arthroscope imaging and then was interpreted by the blinded orthopedic surgeon just to read the, the, read the outcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.